Since the dawn of the Industrial Revolution, mankind has intervened in the climate of the Earth. Man-made climate change is happening. But what if politics prevents us from acting quickly enough? Could technology help us cool the planet? Who should decide if this technology should be used? Your opinion matters. This video presents ideas that need to be discussed and invites global communities to engage in that discussion. Global temperature has risen by almost one degree Celsius since uh, we started burning fossil fuels in large quantities. But really, the prognosis is very, very scary unless we really get our act together and do something effective quite soon. The unexpected, the surprise events are really the thing that concerns me the most. If we start to see uh, seawater uh, increasing in temperature and that causing uh, rapid loss of ice in Antarctica, uh, we could see very rapid sea level rise. In my own region, I'm concerned about the, uh, the potential melting of glaciers in, in, in the Himalayas, which could affect the, uh, the flows of, of the perennial rivers that essentially are essential to the livelihood of hundreds of millions of people. Despite the dire situation, as of today, international agreements are still faltering. There is no sign that we are going to get any better at it in the foreseeable future. In light of the urgency, new ideas are emerging. The idea behind solar radiation management, or solar geoengineering, is to reflect a small percentage of sunlight back into space to cool the planet. We know very little about the techniques. We have, as a species, have never altered the climate deliberately. We've done it as a byproduct of other activities. So it's a fundamental change to think about deliberately engineering the climate. More research is needed. An international working group known as the Solar Radiation Management Governance Initiative was formed in March 2010 to foster global discussion on the key question, how should we govern research of solar radiation management techniques? Here are some of the ways that sunlight can be reflected back into space. One strategy would be to lighten the leaves of crops by planting light leaf species. Another option would be to brighten the surfaces of the built environment, such as roofs, roads, and pavements. Those techniques are great ways to affect local climates, but it's not fundamentally going to change the energy balance of the Earth. Another approach that has been suggested is marine cloud brightening. It would work by making some clouds brighter, allowing them to reflect more sunlight. The idea is that it might be possible to either extend the area covered by these clouds uh, or uh, make them a little bit thicker, preferably out over the sea where nobody's going to object. The most commonly proposed method involves spraying seawater into the lower atmosphere, which in theory would make clouds wider. Initial computer modeling has indicated that if the CO2 concentrations in the atmosphere were doubled, brightening stratus clouds off the west coasts of North and South America and Africa could cool the Earth sufficiently to offset the temperature rise. The main worry over the cloud brightening methods is that they would cause quite um, a high level of cooling in a fairly restricted area and it could actually affect uh, the natural upwelling in the oceans that maintains some of the major fisheries in the world uh, of California and South America and South Africa. Another potential method that can be applied on the planetary scale consists of mimicking the natural cooling effect of volcanic eruptions. By putting reflective tiny particles, aerosols, in the upper atmosphere so they can circulate on the stratospheric winds, we could theoretically block out a small proportion of incoming sunlight. Adding aerosols to the upper atmosphere is considered relatively cheap and easy to deploy if the technology proves effective and safe. these uh, methods might have some effect on the monsoons. Which could lead to dramatic changes in precipitation patterns, drought, crop failures, and potentially conflict. And that really is one of the key research priorities. 
scientists are clear that solar radiation management is no substitute for reducing climate emissions. It's really inconceivable to think of using it as the direct solution to the greenhouse gas problem. Sunlight reflection methods still leave the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. They don't do anything for other serious problems associated with carbon dioxide like ocean acidification. And as an oceanographer, that worries me quite a lot. Some worry that without a global initiative, countries or private parties could engage in geoengineering research or even deployment without a global consensus. If we don't get more people engaged in this conversation, humanity risks the potential for individuals or countries to take unilateral action with potentially large unintended consequences. And we have to you know, deal with that first because people, you know, they are running computer models, they are talking about doing tests out in the field. It's the most uh, uh, urgent priority is to establish a, a system for regulating, if necessary, research so that uh, the rest of the world can feel comfortable that nothing is being done that they would wish to have stopped. Some people do think that any sort of research would lead us onto uh, a slippery slope uh, and lead inevitably to eventual deployment. At the international level, uh, there, there has been some discussion on SRM uh, uh, and geoengineering issues. I think, I think there's a lot more scope for uh, uh, many more countries and their constituents to be involved in it. It's critical to have your voice as part of the conversation about governance of research. What types of activities are appropriate? What types of activities require broader consensus? Only by understanding what perspectives you have and others in your country can we get to a point where we can move forward or not in a way with confidence. That is a conversation that not only scientists have to uh, be part of, but social scientists, political leaders, policy makers, civil society representatives. Because the impact is something that goes beyond the, just the realm of science. Solar radiation management research is really about understanding not just the possibilities for the technology to positively impact the climate, but to understand the unintended consequences that we are likely to see from deployment. Here are some points we would like to discuss together. How can we secure global involvement and a voice for marginalized countries? How do we increase openness of information on the research happening? What is our best approach to foster the debate? What kind of principles and regulations are we seeking? How do we intend to enforce these regulations? Do we want a moratorium? How do we ensure that research into geoengineering does not replace emission reduction efforts? The Governance Initiative does not advocate geoengineering. We encourage you to please join the conversation. www.srmgi.org